So you're probably wondering what these images here represent. Well, they all have something very specific in common. So we have a house, a cityscape, World Cup trophy, a computer. All of these were made possible by human collaboration. And so clearly this slide could have been filled with many, many more images. When we come together as a group, we're capable of incredible things well beyond anything we could hope to accomplish as individuals. So in other words, there's a strength in numbers. Really, for anything we hope to accomplish, we're better off going as a group than going alone. And so while this is generally accepted wisdom, this emphasis in the strength in numbers, at the same time, I think, neglects a key truth. As an illustration, consider this number, 350 million. This is an estimate for the number of children as a result of China's one-child policy who were not born. So this is a strange number. We can understand what it means at an intellectual level, but it feels strange because we really can't empathize with hypothetical people. Empathy is something we do naturally every day. You think about someone you know, you can easily put yourself in their shoes, imagine what it's like to be them. But what's interesting is it doesn't get any easier to empathize when these 350 million people are real. So just think about 350 million actual people, which is roughly the population of the US. Try and empathize with all of them simultaneously. Still, it just feels incredibly abstract. So if you start going down, 100 million, 10 million, 10,000 people, 100 people, might start to feel maybe a little bit more human, but really still just numbers. So if we keep going down all the way, the number of people which we're best able to empathize with is one, the single individual. So despite all of the amazing powers of the group, the synchrony, the collaboration, the team effort, in this limited instance of empathy, there's in fact a massive strength, a massive advantage in the single individual. And this strength of the individual comes to produce powerful, unanticipated consequences. This power of the individual comes back to this process of empathy. As a psychology and neuroscience researcher, this is a mental process I'm fascinated by. Empathy is an amazing human ability. By just glancing at someone, we can not only know what they feel, we can actually come to feel this ourselves. We see somebody stub their toe and immediately we recoil in pain. Somebody walks into the room and they're smiling ear to ear. Typically, we can't help feeling at least a little happier ourselves. We automatically assimilate the mental and emotional states of those around us. And empathy appears to operate inversely to this general principle of the strength in numbers. But how does this actually become powerful? How does individual empathy actually come to produce practical consequences in the real world? Empathy becomes especially powerful, especially potent within the vessel of a story. So whether it's books or movies or spoken word, stories have the amazing ability to export empathy. So now it's not just the person across from you who you're looking at who you're empathizing with, but now it's people and characters who you'd never be able to interact with in your regular walk of life. As the American writer, the late great James Baldwin puts it, you think your pain and your heartbreak are unprecedented in the history of the world, but then you read. And stories and empathy have a very unique relationship. One common feature here, which has inspired some of our experiments, is this idea that stories tend to revolve around just a single individual, one main character. So in Star Wars, this is Luke Skywalker. In Great Expectations, it was Pip. With relatively few exceptions, stories tend to revolve around just a single individual who then we as the audience come to be emotionally invested in. So given all of this, we decided to test this connection directly. We created a series of our own stories, very simple situations, such as running through an airport and barely making a flight. And these were very carefully crafted to either focus on a single individual or a group of people. So a single individual running through an airport and barely making a flight, or the same exact situation happening to a group. And what we found is that across a wide array of different stories and situations, is that those which revolve around just a single individual generate much more emotion and much more empathy. And so put to the test, we see the most potent unit of empathy is the single individual narrative. And this can be a very powerful thing. This can go well beyond simple emotion, well beyond the simple entertainment value of stories. 
These powerful individual narratives can compel us to take incredible actions. So consider the story of Detroit native James Robertson, for example. The 58-year-old had an unbelievable story. To get to his factory job, he would take two buses and walk over 10 miles each way. He would get home early in the morning, sleep a couple of hours, wake up, do it all over again. When a 19-year-old complete stranger learned about his story, he opened up a GoFundMe page to try and cover James a car for his commute. In the end, the campaign raised over $350,000. This outpouring of support came from complete strangers who were simply moved by the power of a story. Taking this a step further, stories can be the literal difference between life and death. This was the case for Dante Sip, a young gymnastics instructor suffering from stage four kidney failure. Through a video of his story that he posted online, he came into contact with Lauren Larison. And despite never actually having met him before, she felt so connected to him through his story that she actually donated him one of her kidneys, and it saved his life. So there are countless examples of this, incredible acts of generosity, of openness, of compassion, made possible by the power of the individual narrative. As Mother Teresa, perhaps one of the most empathetic people in human history said, if I see the masses, I will never act. If I see one, I must act. However, this quote also illustrates that empathy can actually be too powerful. By focusing on a single individual, what else are we missing? For example, it seems to contribute to a phenomenon known as genocide neglect. This is research pioneered by Paul Slovich at the University of Oregon. So in these experiments, he would present participants with the opportunity to donate to a child in need. And for a single child, people reported they would donate, say, $10. He would also present a separate scenario in which there were two children in need. And when he did this, he uncovered a very troubling pattern. The amount which people were willing to donate actually went down. And when three children were in the scenario, even less. And this horrifying trend continues. As the scope of the issue increases, the number of lives affected goes up, our empathy and our willingness to assist actually goes down. And this again comes to the fact that empathy is catered maximally to a single individual, and it doesn't scale well from there. Other research has focused on the fact that empathy can corrode our sense of fairness. So most of us are generally committed to a principle of fairness. We reject the idea that, say, in a hospital line full of sick people, that we let one person who's not any more sick than anyone else skip the line and be treated first. But in these experiments, we're made to empathize with this one individual by being told a highly emotional, highly compelling story about their suffering. And when we're told this story, we're much more likely to let this one individual skip ahead of these equally sick patients. So these individual narratives are also powerful enough to corrode our values. So where does this leave us? On the one hand, these individual narratives can foster incredible connection, making us more open, more generous, more compassionate. On the other hand, we see that they can lead us to act in ways which contradict our own moral principles. So if we're looking for an easy answer, this is a good thing or a bad thing across the board, it's difficult to say. But one thing should be clear. As individuals, we are much more powerful than we realize. Just as we have come to recognize the power of the group, the strength in numbers, we should also come to recognize the power of the individual. Not only to recognize this in others and how their stories can affect us, but to also come to recognize this power within ourselves. Thank you.